So I'm the president and CEO of Through4 Technologies. Um, we were awarded last year an NSF grant, a phase one SBIR grant to investigate the antiviral activity of novel nitrogen doped carbon supported catalyst against COVID-19 surrogates. Just to summarize my, my talk briefly, I'm going to go over current air filtration solutions, the capture technology that they use, through pores technology, and the actual efficacy studies that we did against viruses and bacteria. So just a review of uh, particles of different sizes, uh, modern day air filters, HVAC filters are designed to capture mostly larger particles. Um, they specifically focus around this uh, dust particle size, uh, 2.5 micron and above is our uh, particles that they're very good at catching. Um, unfortunately, the coronavirus and other viruses are within the more difficult to capture size range, which ranges from approximately one micron to about 0.3 microns. So prior to COVID, um, most air filters that were used in, let's say, office buildings, small businesses, uh, places like that, you would generally use a MERV 6 to a 10 graded air filter. And most of the air was recirculated and it, it only, uh, the system only diluted the air about 20%. Um, since uh, the pandemic has started, now ASHRAE is recommending these MERV 13 rated air filters that will capture a little bit more of those uh, particles in that size range and uh, also 100% outside air. Of course, this is not good for your um, HVAC system. It does provide more, it just does cause more um, stress on the system. It uses more energy. Um, and then you also have the HEPA filters, which are not designed for you know, for use in everyday systems. Um, the HEPA technology, however, it's it's very unique. It's completely different. You don't really get uh, passed through the air filter itself. You have the airflow that passes over the plates. So when you have particles in that uh, one micron to 0.3 micron size range, they don't actually move in a linear fashion like uh, other other size particles, both larger and smaller. They in fact move uh, randomly using uh, Brownian motion. So designing a HEPA filter where you have air move over these plates allows for that Brownian motion to occur and you get more capture. Um, this does make the air filter itself more efficient. However, it's it's pretty thick. And um, so if if anybody in here has a HEPA filter, the, you know, a HEPA system themselves uh, within, generally they're within smaller uh, uh, room units, you'll notice that they're pretty loud. Um, it takes a lot of force to pass air um, over all of those plates. And again, they're not recommended for use in a regular uh, HVAC, HVAC system. So what Throughpour does is um, we make porous carbon. We make uniquely porous carbon. It's approximately 90% porous. So if you were to um, zoom in on the carbon itself, you'll notice that it has this tortuous porous structure. And in fact, these ligaments are also porous. So what we've been able to do is we, this is purely synthetic carbon. So we are able to, um, to control the purity, but also we can add dopants and, and things like that to really control what kind of catalytic reactions occur. So prior to COVID, we were, we've mainly been uh, enabling new reactions. We have uh, worked with the US Army Corps of Engineers to develop a munitions waste degradation catalyst. We've worked uh, with various other companies to um, increase, uh, to, to make, uh, heterogeneous um, solid or uh, sorry, fixed bed uh, coupling reactions, scale those up. And we've also commercialized um, plastic waste upcycling reactions. 
And what's unique to our material is that the more material uh, you have that flows through the catalyst, you get more product. So we have higher yields. We're able to really get very few side reactions. We can really focus in on exactly the reaction that you want to occur. So when uh, COVID began to uh, start happening, we, we started um, thinking about our product. And um, with my training as a chemist, the first thing I thought of was, is there some sort of oxidative reaction that we could in fact en enable to um, you know, destroy these viruses, among other things, at room temperature? So we, we received the, the NSF grant to further investigate this. So our, um, our, first, our first and uh, quite successful um, catalyst that we tried was a zinc oxide catalyst, and it's very benign. It's found, found in uh, infant diaper cream as well as sunscreen, and it works by various different mechanisms. So it, it does uh, release reactive oxygen species as well as uh, zinc ions and um, would actually in a, or, uh, degrade the bacteria or an enveloped virus by directly contacting the membrane. So we started using, for testing, we looked at the, um, EPA approved COVID viral surrogates, so specifically bacteriophage MS2. Um, the EPA has a viral hierarchy where it, it uh, looks at things that are more difficult to destroy versus things that are easier to destroy from an oxidative type of perspective. And MS2 is considered to be a small non-enveloped virus, so they consider it uh, more difficult to destroy than SARS-CoV-2. So with our testing, we used uh, a nebulizer to nebulize these uh, viral particles to kind of simu simulate a cough type of uh, situation. And we used an EPA adapted method uh, 1602 to detect these, um, these viruses in a water sample after they were to pass through the filter themselves. Then that water sample was diluted tenfold, um, seven times to produce serially diluted samples. And that allowed us to actually count and um, determine the exact amount of virus that was present both before the filter was treated and then after um, after a solution were to pass through or vapor. And then um, you would, we would count flax, which would indicate um, specifically we had a culture of E. coli and we would count viral plaque. So anything that was considered active and um, any viruses that were active and present, they would kill the E. coli and produce a hole in a viral plate. So the data is actually, um, this is the, the data that we in fact submitted to the EPA. Um, and as you can see, we have uh, four and five nine uh, efficacy. So that is greater than 99.99% reduction of viral plaques. We also seen, see the same efficacy in another uh, bacteriophage that is approximately 0.3 microns, which is called a uh, T4 bacteriophage. Here's a picture of the plaques that I was discussing. So as you can see, an untreated filter, you have a lot of these viruses that in fact do get through. Whereas with ours, a treated filter, um, you see very few viruses survive and get through to kill that E. coli off. We also looked at E. coli and um, found that we in fact stopped 100% of these uh, bacterial cultures, which at that point, um, we weren't quite sure. We wanted to make sure that we were killing bacteria and not just capturing bacteria. 
So we started looking into um, doing timed kill studies where we added the catalyst directly to a culture. And here is some data from that study. And as you can see, after about 10 minutes, we get a decent, we get about 70% reduction in the, uh, the amount of bacteria that is bi uh, viable. But after two hours, we get 0% of bacteria that is uh, viable. So we were able, um, we've done further studies and we've actually been able to specifically find the exact milligrams of active ingredient, which is the zinc oxide per colony forming unit. So we um, further went on to test this uh, with Staphylococcus aureus um, and also Klebsiella pneumoniae. So this is something that the EPA, EPA uh, these are considered hospital hospital acquired infections. So they are very interested in these and want, they wanted us to specifically make sure that our catalyst would kill these as well. And they do, and it does, sorry. So with that, I'd like to conclude and um, just go ahead and announce that our final product developed does in fact kill greater than 99.99% of aerosolized viruses and bacteria. And I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation for funding the initial work. And then we've also had follow-on funding through Newcastle County, uh, Delaware, as well as the state of Delaware uh, to further scale up this product and get it out there. So we are in fact selling um, air filters directly uh, coated with our product called, uh, we call it Dr. Filter. So um, you can see our website, drfilter.com. And um, we are looking currently for a, an air filtration partner so that we can really get more of this product out there. Thank you.